I'm here at Scroop Skincare with founder and dermatologist, Associate Professor Greg Goodman. And today, we're discussing what could potentially be a bit of a depressing topic for us Aussie women. A couple of years ago, Greg co-authored a paper that looked into why us Australian women are aging at an accelerated rate when compared with our US sisters. So today's topic is why Australian women's skin age faster and what we can do to stop it. Thanks to the scientific paper that you co-authored, it has been proven that Australian women have significantly more advanced signs of ageing at a younger age than our American sisters. Can you explain why? Well, not totally. I can't explain totally why Australian women age 10 to 20 years faster than their US counterparts, but we have our theories. And our theories largely revolve around two parts of the Australian um, environment. One is that we're coastal living, so most of us live in a situation where the, the temperature is modulated through the year. It's not really high or really low. If you think of the United States and do a map of where people actually live, a lot of people live inland and they have extremes of climate. Sometimes snowing, they're not gonna get out in that. Sometimes so hot, they can't get out in either. So we have that ability um, to live on the coast and we tend to use that to our disadvantage by being out more. Can you talk about what the most important step in an Australian skincare routine is? Without doubt, it's sunscreen. And without doubt, it's sunscreen from childhood. The problem that we have and we think we have is that it's the reason that study showed that Australian women age much faster is I think it starts from childhood. And we are booted out. We live in a beautiful climate. We're out on the beaches, which we probably shouldn't be. And we are recreationally problematic and sunscreen use throughout people's lives is absolutely important but sunscreen is not it alone. Sunscreen has to be augmented by other things because if you use sunscreen to stay out in the sun longer than you should you are probably impacting yourself on other aspects of ageing. In skincare we hear about antioxidants all the time but can you actually tell us what they are and what they do? Antioxidants are important in, in skincare because we live in a very hostile environment. We live in, a, in an environment where we have sun, where we have pollution, and we also breathe. Now, I'm not suggesting people stop breathing, but oxygen is a really important part of our metabolism, but unfortunately it comes with consequences. A bit like a petrol-driven engine that's producing garbage at the other end. When you combust oxygen to survive and produce energy, you create waste products, and these waste products are called oxidative waste products. Antioxidants are there to mop up these, these oxidative waste products. So are antioxidants something that we can produce ourselves? So antioxidants, we do produce ourselves. We have a system called glutathione and vitamin E that we produce by, by, in our own bodies all the time to combat these oxidative stresses, they're called. But they're limited. And in a country like Australia, where many people are pale-skinned and sun-drenched, and probably everybody is exposed to the same pollutants, it can be overwhelmed and it is overwhelmed. So we do need the oral antioxidants to supplement that. Do you think the diet plays a role? Do you think the movement towards plant-based diets are actually going to be a good thing for our skin? Plant-based diets and food in general is important in bolstering our antioxidants generally, remembering that the skin is not the only organ that requires antioxidants. We breathe in, we combust our oxygen, we need, we will have every single cell in our body will produce waste products. So dietary antioxidants are very important to bolster our own antioxidants by mouth. Um, in the skin, I think the plant-based oral antioxidants have that role as well. And there's no doubt that some of the research has been done, for example, two green apples and two glasses of green tea give you an SPF of about four. So we actually know that, that, uh, that oral uh, agents can actually produce um, nice, a little bit of sun protection. Climate change is pretty topical at the moment. In your opinion, will a rise in the planet's temperature have negative impacts on our skin? Climate change is a many potent thing. And I think we're already suffering, even without the temperature increase, by the rise in pollutants that have caused the climate change. I think pollution is a real problem because we have to handle that because we breathe it in all the time. So that's number one. 
Number two, I think that the change in temperature, the heat we feel is, is, a, is a detractor in, in people's skin, both pigmentation and sun damage long term. <clears throat> so any increase in infrared light, which is basically heat, will be detracted to our skin's surface. Finally, is tanning any better for our skin than burning? Burning is catastrophic because it tends to produce the increase in melanoma uh, in, in conjunction with the genetic tendency, but that is the that that is felt to be what actually induces it, that sudden burn, that sudden jolt to your pigment cells. Um, but long term um, tanning, every single time you tan, you get a mini burn because that's how your cells know to produce more pigment. You burn the base layer, it, it says to the, melanocyte, the pigment cells, produce more pigment, I need to be protected. So every single time you tan, you're doing it with a small burn or a large burn, as the case may be. But either way, you are causing issues. That long-term, uh, ready combustible sort of activity that you're doing is probably setting you off for skin cancers and sun damage long-term. Thank you.